Let's take a closer look at the Skyliner 400P flex tube Dobsonian uh, from Skywatcher. No, yeah, you, we need to be on this one, up here. Follow me, this way, that's it, keep coming, up here, up here. That's it, you're looking at the pup, we wanna be looking at Big Daddy up here. Uh, let's start that again then. I'm gonna introduce you to the 16 inch uh, 400P flex tube Dobsonian uh, from Skywatcher. Um, it's available in two octane grades, both in manual version and the uh, very popular um, Sinscan uh, go-to system. Um, this telescope really builds on the success and popularity of the previous uh, flex tube models and they're really uh, getting their act together with this telescope and getting a very high standard of performance from it. Um, I want to show you some of the detail about this telescope but the first thing I really want you to see is the sheer size of it. Um, this is over two meters high. This really is a very very big very impressive telescope. If you think the telescope's big you really want to see the boxes it comes in. Um, there's enough room in them to accommodate at least two people in, in some considerable comfort, to be honest with you. Um, don't even think about this telescope, not even briefly, if you're living in an upstairs flat or something like that. Um, the base here, for example, the, uh, the unit at the, uh, the, the bottom down here is 33 inches in diameter. Um, so although that will go through a standard door, um, you're probably not going to be able to do it on your own. You really need to be positioning this with, uh, with two people. Another thing to notice is look at the height of the uh, eyepiece uh, holder up there. Um, I'm just over six foot tall and you can see that if I position myself at the eyepiece, um, when it's directly overhead, I, I actually can't reach the eyepiece. I'm, I'm going to need to actually stand on something. Let's kick off with the biggest feature of the uh, FlexTube uh, telescope system first. That's its ability to make itself smaller. You might not have a lot of faith in the idea of a 16 inch telescope that can make itself smaller, but it is actually quite impressive. By undoing these little Tommy bars at the side here, um, I can simply push the uh, secondary cage, um, once I get it moving that is, hang on, I think I've got them all off, there we go, there we go. I can just slide that down and push it into the telescope and it's now ready for me to, to, to pick it off the base here. Now, I think it might be possible for one man on his own to actually pick um, this gigantic telescope up on his own out of this base. You certainly couldn't move it on your own in the drive base. The telescope tubes uh, got to come off the top here. But I don't know, I think you might have to have uh, biceps like Popeye uh, to be able to pick this up on your own. And you'd also have to feel very confident in yourself that you weren't going to trip or fall with it because it's quite a lot of money to start putting dents in this kind of telescope. So I really think you would have to recommend that you moved this instrument and assembled it with at least one person helping you. Even if they weren't going to be involved in the observations, you would need help, I think, actually setting it up. Unless you had some means of having it perf um, permanently constructed and uh, a roll-off roof or some other arrangement for it. Um, let's just put that back up again. Okay, that felt a little bit easier this time. And put the locks back in again. I'm just gonna uncover the mirror as well because I'm gonna show you that in a little bit more detail in just a moment as well. Obviously we've got this uh, huge, is it good for you Drew? Can you see that, is that all right? Um, we've got this huge 16 inch uh, mirror down the bottom here. You can see the secondary at the top here, of course, it's a Newtonian system. Um, that mirror is capable of delivering over 800 times magnification uh, in ideal conditions. I think the book actually says 812 as a, uh, in terms of premium performance. Um, a mirror this size, uh, just to give you an idea, is capable of collecting something like 35% more light than a typical 12 inch or 300 mil uh, Newtonian mirror system. So you really are talking about an instrument here at the very top end, something of an ultimate model for light collecting uh, as an amateur telescope. And there are very few of the more popular targets in the night sky, uh, the faint fuzzies, that this telescope isn't going to show you absolutely brilliantly. That's something you could rely on uh, with an instrument of this size. At the business end up here, we've got a good quality, straight through uh, 8x50 uh, finder scope, uh, nice and easy to use and set up. 
and a really lovely and very, very smooth Crayford focuser here uh, that's good for inch and a quarter eyepieces and two inch. Just take a look at this in a little bit more detail. It really has got a lovely feel to it. We've got a slow speed, so this is a twin speed focuser here. We've got the standard rapid focus uh, uh, option there, and then we've got this beautiful uh, planetary ball uh, system on the end that gives that uh, that really fine focus feel and that's absolutely ideal on a telescope like this because as stable and as well engineered as this telescope is being able to adjust the focus with a with a with a fingertip and very very gently minimizes vibration at the telescope and actually makes it a lot easier for you to get that critical uh, perfect focus so that you can then hands off completely and and really enjoy the view I've already told you that there are two versions of this telescope. There's the basic model without any drives at all. And there's obviously the one we're looking at here, which is the SynScan uh, go-to version. I'm just going to show you that in a little bit more detail. Um, this is that handset that we've really come to know and love on the other SynScan uh, model uh, telescopes in the Skywatcher range. Um, it really is a powerful piece of kit, well over 30,000 targets. I'm not even going to bother telling you the exact right number. Um, the moment you start coming up with numbers like 30,000, it all gets a little bit sort of too much, I think. Um, you'll bear in mind that of the popular targets that people look at, we're probably talking about less than a thousand targets. And this telescope's got well over 30 times that number. And of course, because of its optic, optics, it's actually capable of showing you uh, a good number of that uh, 30,000 target. The SynScan GoTo system is obviously a great system for enabling you to point at targets in the night sky. It'll find them for you once you've done a basic setup of the instrument. And it will also track for you as well. So obviously the telescope will completely compensate for the rotation of the Earth and take that, uh, that movement out so that the target stays stationary or appears to be stationary in the eyepiece. But now there's a bit of a, a culture clash here um, with this kind of technology on a Dobsonian. Most people think of Dobsonians as the ultimate telescope to just point and shoot, just drag it to wherever you want to uh, actually observe. Very easy to move around, no, no fuss and uh, uh, mucking around with uh, drives or anything like that. But with this instrument, you've really got the best of both worlds because a terrific feature of the uh, flex tube um, SynScan GoTo scopes is their dual encoder system. Now what's great about dual encoders is that even after you've got the telescope set up and it's all aligned and the electronic system is working, you can still simply grab hold of the telescope manually and move it to wherever you want and the GoTo system will still function. So if you intend to make a 180 degree move across the sky and you set the GoTo system rolling, you can help it along. You can simply grab hold of the telescope, bring it round to the target you want to look at or somewhere near. The telescope will then finish off the move, taking it down very precisely to the target. What a fantastic system. And is very much in keeping with the ethos of the Dobsonian telescope, enabling you to just move it around at will and then kick back into the go-to and tracking system. Let's just show you that um, SynScan system in just a little bit more detail. I just want you to hear it and see it operating uh, as we can do that. We're not going to take it outside, but I can just show it to you here. Just take it out of its holster. And um, this cable uh, that I've just plugged in here, that actually comes in the kit. That enables you to connect it to any cigar lighter socket, either on um, one of these kind of uh, battery systems or in an automotive um, uh, cigar lighter socket in a motor car or something. Anyway, let's just power it up. Now obviously you'd have to tell the uh, handset here uh, your location, uh, wherever you're actually observing from. You wouldn't have to change that and unless you actually move, that'll actually stay on the handset without you uh, updating it every time. You will need to tell it the date and you will need to tell it the time of your observation. Uh, otherwise, everything, everything else can actually uh, stay as you, you, as you left it last time. Um, the alignment procedure uh, really starts with you picking a bright star, something that you're familiar with perhaps, pointing the telescope at it, saying that's okay. The telescope will then move on to a second star. You center and okay that, and then you're off. Um, you've got full access to the, uh, the handset's menu system, allowing you to pick from well over 30,000 targets. Um, the automatic tracking system works immediately. There's no programming for you to do. The handset knows where everything is, the positions of the planets, 
uh, don't have to be updated by you at any time or anything like that. They are good for the entire lifetime of the telescope. All I'm going to do now is just show it you uh, um, uh, actually operating. So I'm just going to set the rate to position 9 there. That's its fastest. And you can see. It might sound a little bit noisy because I've got the mic quite near the system. All I can tell you is that for a telescope of this size, the sound of the drive system really isn't that bad and the manufacturer calls it quiet and I'm inclined to agree. If I slow it down a little bit and go into rate 5 there, you probably get a slightly better sense. There we go. Just gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, what the telescope looks and sounds like actually when it's operating. Let's just reiterate um, this issue about the size of the telescope. I know as you see me standing here with it, it's pretty obvious that it's, uh, it really is a giant and really quite intimidating. Uh, size really does matter. Um, but I just want to show you the kind of um, uh, the strategy you're going to need to develop to actually use a telescope like this because of the, the eyepiece height. Even if we're pointing it in the sky, I want to introduce you to this kind of an idea, um, which is a not an uncommon thing to be using with uh, Dobsonians, which is this little uh, uh, stand here, this little staircase, because you can see that even at quite reasonable altitudes, the eyepiece is still too high for me. You know, I'm over six foot tall, but I still can't get conveniently to that. And I'm really going to have to go up here to have a chance of looking in. This, this ladder has been equipped with a, a little handhold here. It's something that's, uh, that we've made ourselves. I'm sure you could make something like it. But you do need to think about this kind of an issue when you're going to be using a telescope of this size. Okay, so that about uh, sums that up. Um, just a couple of other points to mention. You do get a good pair of eyepieces included with the telescope. You get a 25mm uh, standard PLOSL and a 10mm uh, PLOSL. So if you haven't got too much of your own equipment, the, the telescope is pretty much ready to go. All you've then got to do is supply a uh, power system and a clear night and you're ready to go. That's the whole kit and caboodle. That's the Skyliner 400p flex tube Dobsonian available as a manual model or the one that we're showing you here is the SynScan that's the all singing all dancing full go to system that's it bye for now see you soon there is room for two switch the light off when you go alright <laughs> <laughs>